Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we're going to keep taking a look at our courses inside of 2.0. And here we got our customer page. And before I go any further, I just want to remind you that as you're going along here, that the pages that we're looking at here are our actual template pages. And as you recall from last time, we put this notation in here at the top. Well, you may want to keep one that has that notation on it, but then also still make a clone of it to be able to use it, especially with lesson pages, I think really more than anything else. You may want to clone that page in order to have like three or four different variations of what your lessons are going to look like. So don't forget we can come in here and let's just type in the word lesson. We'll find it right there. And let's say we want to clone this lesson page. We just come over here to clone the page. We say proceed. And when it does it, it will give you the copy of a hero theme. And of course, we can change this. And we can just say, uh, you know, this is our, I'm just going to say, our new lesson and you can leave the courses lesson template page thing on there afterwards if you like want to do some seo you can again i would think that in most cases on a lesson you're not going to really do any um seo on there because you normally this will be locked behind a wall somewhere and probably wouldn't really get indexed too much anyway and the other thing is here you can also of course set your style down there if you would like and then we can update the page and now, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's right here. In fact, I see it already. It kicked this into the stand alone pages right here. So it took it out of where the themes were and it put it into the standalone pages. And let me just reload my page just to make sure that's going to be where it stays. So it looks like it is going to try to stay there. But then let's go into this page itself. Let's see what happens when we click on this. Okay, so it took us here, and um, again, <clears throat> what we can do here is we can, we can pin this to our site. So I just come over here and I click on pin this page to our site. We can also say, do we want it searched in the search engines or found in the search engines or not? And of course, a sharing image, and I think that was probably on the other page as well. Our SEO metadata description, if you choose to put one in, but only you will see that description. And now we will update our page. And now what it did is it brought us back here into the site itself. And let's go back into here. Let's click on it. And let's see that did not then show up here. So this says Funnel Hub Framework. Let me make sure I'm in the right place here. So we're in Success Path. And then we're going to come here. Let's go to Customize. And okay, so here we are now. Now it's saying Site. So where was I before that funnel hub framework had actually said that's strange. I'm not quite sure where that would have come from. Maybe on my replay as I'm, as I'm editing this, I'll be able to take a look at that. But this is where we should be showing up right here. And then we still, so we have our site pages down here, like you would expect. And then our theme pages up here at the top. And our template pages, I guess, technically is what it was for our theme. So we're going to go into our customer center. And so in the customer center template itself, you see here we got a couple of universal sections. Again, we talk about that in other places uh, in the supplemental stuff. So I'm not going to go into that too much. And then, of course, we have our, our area down here where it's going to give us all of our courses. So again, what that is going to create is a page similar to what they have here for uh, ClickFunnels. And so each one of these would represent um, an image right there like that. And so that so let me just go through how to set this up because there's really not a lot to any of these pages. So let's just go in here and add an element. And what we want to do is we want to go to our courses over here on the right. And we are at the course level right now. So we want a collection of all of our courses. That's what we are looking for here is a collection of all of our courses. So we just click on this. And for some reason, they have the ability to put in up to six columns. You're going to see in a minute here why I can't understand why you would pick anything other than one column. Because once we put in the one column, then we can say, okay, what do we want in here to represent each one of our individual courses? And of course, we want to have the image for our course. So we're going to put that in there. And you see, as I do that, it populates every single one of these squares. So we're going to have our image in there. And then underneath there... 
we're going to put in a link. And in this case here, it says go to our course title, go to course, course title. And so that's all we're going to put in there. We could put in a name, the publish, the other stuff here. I'm not going to do that. So then we have all this right here. And that, that's looking a little narrow to me at this point. So probably what I would do is probably come into this this row up here and we can make this row bigger. I mean, 1170 is the normal for this. So let's just make it at 1170. I don't know. I guess it was so narrow because I just put it in by some text here. So we got this at 1170. So as you see here, what, what happened is we put in the courses collection element. It puts in inside of it, each one of these little boxes, it puts in a row. Inside the row, I put in an image and then this little bit of text down here. Now the image itself will always have the link to the course in it natively. So you really don't need anything more than the images. I see over here with ClickFunnels, they have the image, they got a little hover effect on it, which you'd have to do with CSS. But then underneath there, they just have the the name of the course. And the name is not even clickable in the case of ClickFunnels. And so here what you could do is you could even take out here where it says, go to course, completely take this out. It'll just put the course title in there and then that course title will be clickable. And we'll see this as we move forward. And that really is about it. You, of course, can come in here. You can style any of this you want. You can, let's say, we want to put on a, a box shadow around the outside. That's a hideous box shadow. So let's um, make it, you know, that. That's, that's way too dark. So let's go way down here. You know, something like that, whatever. Um, so you get, the, you get the idea here. You can put a little bit more room around the outside. You can do everything that you could anywhere else as far as editing this. And then about the only other thing, and this thing's a little hard to get into sometimes. And we'll come in here. The only other thing you want to really look at in here besides changing the pagination information is you might say, okay, well, I want three across, let's say, on the screen, but I only want it to only show three. So we'll make this down to three. Now, I will tell you what's going to happen is if you do this at three, but you have five, no matter what, it will put in the pagination. So... Um, Always put in as many as you potentially have, the maximum that somebody could have. Otherwise, there will be pagination at the bottom, and unless you don't care that there's pagination, and then that'll be fine right there. And of course, if there's extra boxes and you don't have courses to fill those, those boxes won't be showing on the screen either. Now, there's one other thing I will show you real quickly here, is you could take this down so there's only one item across the entire screen like that. And so that comes in handy for a couple other things and I'll show you that in a little bit how we can play around with that um, later when we talk about modules in a couple of minutes because I'm gonna blow through all the templates here right now. So let's actually go back in here. Let's come into our pink. Let's make this one back to three. So it's more like uh, what Russell has. So we got three of those there and that's exactly what we have down here at the bottom. So in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in and delete out this element that I just created. Now also in this same area, they have down here products at the very bottom. And again, it's the exact same thing as a product collection. So let's take a look here because any, any products you have, you can also display on this screen. So we'd have to come here not to courses, but to products. And we would come down, we'd put in a product collection and we would operate exactly like we did on the other. So we don't need to go through that again. So for right now, that's all I'm gonna look at here. In fact, let me just change a couple of minor things. Let's come into our courses. Let's just say we want a maximum of three of them on the page, just so not taking up too much room. So we got three across the board there on our page. And again, in this case, well, let's just leave them both in here. That way we see them when we build the course, we'll actually see what that is going to look like with a couple of those elements at the bottom. So let us save our page. And now we're going to go into our course home. And again, you're going to find is pretty much exactly the same thing. So here we had customer center. There was nothing we could populate up here at the top. But here we have course home and we can put in the title of the course right there. So let's just click on our elements. And again, we will go to courses. And here you will get your course title 
from right here. This would be your course title right there. Um, let me see here. Let's just click on it. Yeah, so this would be your course title. But what they did, let me just make sure. So that says course link, and this one says course link. Yeah, okay. All they did is they came in to the element, and they stripped off the go to course there in the beginning is what they did. So we will take that out. So that's how you get this. This here is our breadcrumb element. And again, if we go into, no, let me see, we don't go into there. Here's our breadcrumb element right here under our general settings. So we have a breadcrumb element there. And let's just take a look at it and see what we can set in here. We got padding, typography, background, text shadows. So all the usual suspects you have right in there. Then we have a collection. Now again, down here with the collection, these are, so here is your course. So here is the main, here's your course. And then inside of your course, you're going to have modules or sections, depending on where it is on here and what they're calling them. They're exactly the same. So a module or a section is just a collection of lessons. So here we would put in our our section title or module title would be what is going to appear here. And again, let me just grab a hold of the element. So we come over here to course. But in this case here, we're not working with the course anymore. We're now at the module level because this here is a collection of the modules inside of the course itself. And so you would click on this element right there. Works exactly the same as the one we already went through, so no reason to go through that again. And uh, again, that's pretty much it on the page here. We've got a footer at the bottom, like you would imagine. And so that's it for this page. We didn't make any changes on here. Now, the module lessons page, this one here is interesting. So let's go back over here to Russell's first. And let me see if I can find a better example of maybe one that had more modules in it. Now, this one only has one module see what we got here because the problem with the funnelology one is it only has one module and that's what I'm seeing on all of these is yeah it only has one module so this box right here is the entirety of that singular module and so um, there are different ways we can display this so let's take a look here so now we are at our modules and inside of our modules then um, okay, so let me just back up and be clear here what we're looking at. So if we go inside of here, this here is going to be, um, so select a module below. So this page right here is our course homepage. So right there, that is our course homepage. This is our course homepage, and these are the modules down here, but there's only the one module. And so that's why it's only showing a singular thing down here. Well, now we've moved down into the module lessons. And so here now we are looking for the lessons for each one. So again, it's exactly the same as before. And so let me just uh, show you that. Come in here, we click on courses. And so first off, we started with a course and put in the collection of all the courses. Then we're inside of a course itself, we put in the collection of all the modules. And now inside of a module, we're going to put in the collection of all of the lessons inside of that module. Of course, once we get the module, there won't be any collection because I, I, once we get into a lesson, I'm sorry, there won't be any collection because it's just the content there finally when we get to that point. But so back on the module itself here, you're going to see, so this here, this represents the entirety of the module. When we click on this module now, it's going to give us a listing of all of our lessons. At least it should have. Let's find a different example because that one may not be working right. Let's go into Funnelology. I saw those in here before. So we go to our lessons. And we're going to see a whole listing of all of our lessons right here. And um, again, so this here is not a lesson page. This here is the module page with a listing of all of our lessons. And so that's where we are here. We are on our module page. And this here is a listing of all of our lessons. And this here is actually wrong. So let's delete that out of there. Before I delete that out, let me just look at one thing. We want to see how big is this. So we're at 96 pixels is this element. And so, and you see here, there's a lesson title. That should not be the lesson title. That should be the module title. So let's go to our courses and we come down to our module and we want our link 
to our module or in this case here, like I said, they call it a section. And so let's change that out and let's make this pixels. Let's make this 96 pixels right there. Let's take off the go to part here in the beginning. And so we have our section title and obviously let me see here. Let's just make this all black and make it bold and close enough. So we'll take out this one here. And now we have the proper title in here because this was not the lessons. This was the module that should be showing here and the collection of the lessons inside the module all laid out here down below it. Got your breadcrumbs, again, the collection footer at the bottom of the page. This one here we do need to save because we did make that correction right there. And then the last one we have to look at is our lesson page. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot a specific video just on the lesson here in a minute. I think that's the best way to do that because I want to back up to the, less, uh, the module page here for a minute. Because what we're looking at here is, um, let me see here. Let's go back. Uh, that's not the right page. Let's go back here to Funnelology. Okay, so here again we are... Um, well, it says select a module. So that means if we're selecting a module, that means we are on the course page. So we're going to click on that. And then here is all of our lessons. So this means we are on the module page because on the module page, you can select your lessons. So on the module page here, they have essentially an image and then the text next to it. Well, you can actually do that because how we're going to do that is we're going to come into this element right here and we are going to say that what we want is we want only one per row. So we're going to make this one per row and you see here we have already a row. What we want to do is we want to add a row, put in a two column row and inside of that two column row, then we're going to drag a few things around. We're going to take our image down here. We are going to take our lesson title and our lesson link. We're going to put that there. And then there's going to be some shadow and stuff around here. Uh, but we're just going to delete that out. And then we're going to do a couple more things. We're going to do that. And what we want is we want all these to be a little bit wider. So we're just going to say... Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think all the rest of them were set at 80%. So we're going to do that. We're going to make this 80%. And now, again, just uh, for the sake of a little something here, let's just put a little bit of shadow around the outside of this, make that blur a little bit bigger. So now we have a shadow around there, and very quickly we lined it up much more like what they have over here in, um, in, in ClickFunnels. And so you could do that with any one of these pages. You, could, you probably wouldn't want to do it with like the Customer Center page, but uh, certainly on the Course Home page or Module Lessons page, you can list them all like this side by each instead of just having individual boxes because again also you can put in here a description element so let's go to our course lesson and then here we have well in this case I guess we don't have a description on these because let me see we're at the module level so this would be this description for the lesson so apparently the lessons don't get a description at all but if we were to go up to the course home level and I'll just uh, not save that there. If we come up here to the course home level and we were to do the same thing, um, then we would have course modules, publish date, description. So here we have a description. Apparently you don't have one with, um, with the other. And then in the case of this element right here, we could float that to the left and make it all like the same. But again, we can line this up side by side as well. So I think that's long enough for this video. I will shoot one more video looking at some very specific things about the lessons because there's one thing in there you absolutely have to have or you're not going to be able to put any kind of dynamic content into your lessons. So as always, if you have any questions, just let me know.